We wrote a simple smart contract in Sway, a counter contract. Now it's time to write a test. So in this video, I'll show you how to write a simple test in Sway. Before we get started, there are some preparations that we will need to do. So I'll open my terminal. And the first thing that I'll do is check my fuel toolchain versions. So I'll type fuel up show, and this will print out some information and make sure that we are targeting the testnet beta 3 for our toolchain. Once we check the version of our toolchain, the next thing that I'll do is make sure that our contract compiles. So I'll type fork build. Once the contract compiles, this will create some files inside the out folder, which will later become important when we write our test. Okay, next step, let's install the test framework. To install the test framework, here's the command that you'll need to paste. I got this command from the official documentation. Once the command executes successfully, you'll notice that it created a new folder called tests and under it, it has a file called harness.rs. Let's open this file. So I'll close my terminal and then open harness.rs. And this is a template to get started on writing tests in Rust. The first thing that I'll do is change my contract to the actual name of my contract. Going back to my Sway contract, the name of my contract is counter. So I'll change this my contract to counter, counter, and counter. And the other thing that I'll do is go back to cargo.tamo and notice here that it installed 0.42. I'm gonna change this version to 0.41, which targets the beta 3 testnet. Okay, going back to our harness.rs, notice here that the path to ABI is out debug counter slash ABI.json. I'm going to open my out folder and you can notice here that we have a file called counter slash abi.json. So this setting over here tells where the compiled files are located at. Okay, let's try running our first test. If I scroll down, here is a sample test and I'll execute this test by opening my terminal, clear the logs, and then type cargo test. Okay, and our test passed. Going back to the test file, let's now actually write the real test. What we're going to test is going back to the counter contract. I want to write a test to increment the count, decrement the count, and also to get the count. Okay, so going back to our test file, I'll rename this test to test, inc, and dec. The first function that I'm gonna explain is called get contract instance. What this does is it creates a wallet and then it deploys our counter contract and then it returns the instance of the counter contract that was deployed and the ID of the contract. This is like the address of a contract in Ethereum. Okay, so the instance will be the contract instance that was deployed and ID will be the contract ID. And what we're going to do is increment the count and also decrement the count and at each step, we'll check the count. So to call the function inc on our counter contract, what we will do is type instance dot methods parentheses dot name of the function inc dot call parentheses dot a wait, and then we type on wrap. This will return a response, so we'll assign it to a variable that rest is equal to. Now, what does this response look like? If you want to print this response into your terminal, what you would do is type print ln exclamation mark and then inside here you would type double quotes curly braces colon hashtag and then followed by the value that we want to print. We want to print this rest so let's put in rest over here and then end it with a semicolon. So this weird syntax tells Rust to print the value of rest. Okay, let's try running the test and then see what's inside this rest variable. Open the terminal, clear the logs, and we'll type cargo test. Now to display the values into our terminal, we'll have to type dash 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 no capture. Okay, our test executed successfully, and you can see here that this is the value that was logged. Okay, going back to our code, so this is how you would debug your Rust code. Now going back to our contract, when we call the function inc, it's going to return the current response, storage.count. So after we increment it, let's assert that the count is equal to 1. So say assert equal, 
exclamation mark inside here, the value that was returned will be inside rest.value and we expect this value to be equal to 1. Okay, let's execute the test again. Open the terminal and execute the test. And our test passes. Going back, next I want to test the function get. This will get the current value stored in count. So to do that, simple, just copy this code, paste it here, and the function that we'll call is get. And when we call this function, we still expect that the count state variable is still equal to 1. Open the terminal, execute the test again, and the test still passes. Okay, one last test. Let's decrement the count. Again, copy this code, paste it here. The function that we'll call is dec, and over here, the current state of the count is equal to 1. If we decrement it, we expect this value to be equal to 0. Execute the test again, and again, our test passes. Next, I'm going to show you how to test for failures. Recall in a previous video that when we deploy the contract, the counter state variable initialized as 0. And when we first call the function dec, when the count was still equal to 0, it threw an error. This is because of an underflow error. So in our test, let's test that if we call the function dec, when the count is still equal to 0, it throws an error. Going back to the test file, I'm going to copy this code and then paste it here. I'll rename this test to test deck under flow. And to tell that we expect this test to fail, we would type hashtag brackets and then type should panic. And inside here, we'll deploy a new contract and then call the function deck. So I'll copy this code over here, paste it here. We deploy a new instance of a counter contract and we don't need the response since we expect it to fail and the function that we'll call is deck. So again here we deploy a new contract the value of the counter state variable is equal to zero and then we immediately call decrement. This will cause an underflow and we're telling here should it panic we're telling here that we expect this test to fail. Let's run the test. Open the terminal, execute the test again and the test passes. In summary, in this video, I showed you how to write a test for the Sway smart contract using the Rust SDK. We tested a happy path where we incremented and decremented and then checked the count. And we also checked for underflow error, decrementing the count when the count was still equal to zero.